This is the Mekong, one of Asia's major rivers and the 12th longest in the world. It nurtures a great deal of life in its waters and in the wetlands, forests, towns and villages along its path. The Mekong's long journey begins in the Tibetan highlands. It flows through China's Yunnan province and then across Myanmar, Thailand, Laos and Cambodia before entering the sea from southern Vietnam. It's a journey of nearly 5,000 kilometers or some 3,000 miles. The Mekong River Basin is the land surrounding all the streams and rivers that flow into it. This covers a vast area, roughly the size of France and Germany combined. On its long journey across six countries, the Mekong provides a lifeline to over 65 million people. They share Mekong waters for drinking, farming, fishing and industry. Along the way, the river also generates electricity for Southeast Asia's emerging economies. The Mekong has sustained life for thousands of years. But growing human demands are slowly building up environmental pressures on the river. A new study commissioned by the UN Environment Programme cautions that climate change could add to this in the coming years. The climate change would affect, in fact, the effect will come in the amount of rainfall which is received. So under climate change conditions, we expect less rainfall to be observed and that would bring less flows in the river which would affect the water uses in the downstream areas. Dr. Mukhan Babel is a researcher at the Asian Institute of Technology in Bangkok. He led a team of experts who studied what makes the Mekong waters vulnerable. The study probed how climate change can impact the river from the highlands to the delta, affecting the survival and prosperity of millions. At the same time, the sea level rise, which is an associated impact of climate change, would bring more seawater intrusion into the river systems and groundwater systems in the delta in Vietnam. Salt water could go upstream by 60 to 70 kilometers, degrading the land and water in the Mekong Delta. This would add to pressures already coming from growing human numbers, expanding economies and disappearing forests. Farmers would be among the most affected by these changes. Today, most of the Mekong's waters are used for irrigated agriculture especially for growing rice. But the demands from cities and industries are rising. If you look at the majority of water use is in agricultural sector and also in the future when economic growth which is taking place in Southeast Asia will put tremendous pressure on the water resources and for that we need to be careful from now. Some farmers realize they will soon have to manage with less water. Man Pai Pakman is a rice farmer living in Conbury in northeastern Thailand. Farmers here use water from the upper Mun River, a tributary of the Mekong. They get their water from a local reservoir. But soon it will also supply water to the nearby city of Korat. <laughs> This can spell trouble for her rice fields. Environmental changes are already affecting freshwater fishing on the Mekong. The study identifies the Tonle Sap Lake in Cambodia as an ecological hotspot. Linked to the Mekong River, the lake is a very important wetland. The Tonle Sap Lake is, is in Cambodia and is one of the very important ecosystems. It supports the livelihood of a large number of people who are dependent on for their livelihood through fish production. 
people here know how their lives and jobs are linked to the ebb and flow of nature's cycles. Now these patterns are being disrupted by reduced rainfall and river flow. This is partly the result of dam building upstream. The Mekong countries have to carefully manage the upstream-downstream tensions. They also have to balance competing demands for water, for example, from cities and villages, and among the different sectors such as farming, households and industry. Then there are other challenges. Two out of every five people in the basin don't have safe drinking water or proper toilets. They are just too poor to afford these basic amenities. To improve their living standards, countries need to invest more in rural areas. The study recommends Mekong River countries to improve how they manage their water and land. This needs better policies, institutions and systems. Countries sharing the Mekong River or same rivers, they have to act together and they have to develop the policies how to conserve and uh, how, to, uh, the, the, how to conserve the Mekong River and also how to uh, properly manage the Mekong River. The study found the Mekong River Basin moderately vulnerable to environmental changes. There aren't any major water shortages in this river basin as yet. For now, the Mekong is holding up despite many pressures. But all this can change if less water is flowing down the river and the demand for water keeps growing. That's why the Mekong countries need to watch this river, their main lifeline.